In this carnivore day of eating, I am going to show you guys how I achieve all of the vitamins, minerals, and elements my body needs, starting with leftovers from last night, as Frankie Boy's eyes are a little bit bigger than his stomach. So here I have some leftover beef belly that I just threw on the grill last night. I, this was just sitting on my counter. What I'm going to do now is put this in the oven while I prepare the rest of my meal. I'm also going to have some beef brains with the belly. This is for omega-3 fatty acids, EPA, DHA. Brain is also very high in vitamin C and vitamin E. Uh, we're just going to pan sear this. And here I have a mixture of colostrum and raw milk. Uh, what I'm actually doing is an allergy protocol. So I'm taking a very small amount before and after every meal for a period of time. Uh, the idea is that if you consume a small enough amount to not elicit an immune response for a period of time, the immune cells in your body will get used to it and you should be able to fix an allergy. I'm testing this out. I really don't think it's gonna work, but basically what I'm doing is mixing equal parts colostrum and milk because colostrum has immunoglobins. Colostrum is the first milking of the cow. So there are unique immune cells in it that the calf gets. And then it's half milk because if I don't incorporate milk into this, I'm not going to alleviate my allergy to milk. So all I really do is take a little under a teaspoon before a meal. And the reason I'm not so optimistic about this is because I was using a tablespoon before and after meals and that made me break out like crazy. I did get an immune response. So we'll see how this goes over the next few weeks. I will keep you guys updated and let you know if it works. Uh, but let's fry up those beef brains. So I always dry off the surface of the brain before I sear it. This is gonna help me get a nice crust. Here I just have some grass-fed beef tallow. There's a lot of moisture in the beef brain, so it tends to, to pop a lot and, and spray grease everywhere. So what I do is I usually just shake the pan a little bit to keep the beef brain moving and keeping the heat distribution even. Okay guys, that's my crispy seared beef brain. All right, so all I usually do is I just take a little bit of salt, put it on the outside of the beef brain. And the inside temperature of this is still raw. So we're preserving the vitamin C, the vitamin E, some of the water soluble vitamins, especially B12, that do get degraded with cooking. And the reason I like these so much is because I'm allergic to eggs and brains have a very similar taste and texture to eggs. And yeah, if you're a normal person, you can just consume eggs for your DHA, for your EPA, for your vitamin E. You, know, you don't have to consume brains for those vitamins if you can consume eggs as an alternative. So the brains are literally enough DHA for the week. Sometimes I'll have them twice, but usually only once. Now the vitamin C and vitamin E and all the other vitamins contained in brain tissue are achieved through other foods as well. Although for me, brain is definitely a considerable source of those vitamins specifically. Now this navel belly, the beef belly, is primarily for calories, but since it is grass-fed and vitamins are stored in the fat of grass-fed animals, we're achieving an overall net increase in fat-soluble vitamins in the diet. And this is why food quality is important. When you're consuming two to three pounds of meat per day, if it's all from high quality sources, your fat soluble vitamin intake will be substantially higher. You know, this makes us able to get enough retinol, enough of the B vitamins, vitamin C, vitamin, even small amounts of vitamin D3 in some cases, vitamin K2. We're able to achieve these nutrients without having to seek them in other ways. Normally someone might have to consume liver or a bunch of other organs if their meat is not nutrient dense. I usually just cut a piece, sprinkle a little bit of salt on it. I don't, something about leaving the steak out overnight on the counter, the flavor changes dramatically the next day. 
I would say I like it a little more. Now, I'm not actually too hungry. I could have stopped eating after I ate the brain, but my goal lately has been to put on excess body fat so I can fast for a prolonged period of time. Uh, so the plan is, you know, put on 5, 10 pounds of extra body fat, fast for two weeks, repeat the cycle. So I'm finished with most of this, but I still got a couple more things to do for my meal. Okay, so I'm just going to do another teaspoon of the, the raw milk and colostrum mixture. And since I haven't really been consuming any seafood or salmon roll lately, I do have an iodine supplement. I either take two drops orally. Sometimes I do both. So I'll take two drops orally. A little bit bitter tasting iodine. Not, not the best thing to taste. So what I prefer to do is transdermal. Now, the transdermal rate of iodine absorption is 10%. So when you do this, you got to do 10 times as much. So either two drops orally or 20 drops transdermally. Now the reason I don't recommend doing it transdermally is because this stuff, it, it can go everywhere. So, and it stains very easily. So be careful if you decide to do this transdermally. But what I normally do is I'll just like fill up a dropper and make some sort of some sort of spotty pattern. And I'll rub that in. Sometimes I'll do a little more, rub it in. But that that's usually all I do. Uh, I did already take some vitamin D3 today. Uh, so maybe we'll take some more later and I'll show you guys how I do that. All right, I changed my mind. We'll take some now. So uh, this is a 1000 IU drop of vitamin D3. It doesn't normally come with this type of dropper. Uh, I just put this dropper on this bottle. And I usually take a couple thousand IU every few hours. Uh, this I always do transdermally. So I'll just do the same thing, like five drops. Just five drops, rub it in, that's it. The reason you don't want to take vitamin D3 orally is because they use hexane to extract the D3 from sheep wool. So there's definitely something in the manufacturing process from a chemical standpoint that we probably don't want in our body. And also rubbing it on your skin is a much more natural way to achieve vitamin D3. So in regards to nutrients, I already have gotten everything I need. Uh, there really isn't any vitamin or mineral that's missing from what we've consumed so far. Maybe you can increase your vitamin A intake a little bit with some liver, but it's not necessary. It's also worth noting if you guys do rub iodine on your hands. It does take a couple hours to go away. So I just bear that in mind. Uh, but I'm probably going to do some work, uh, go to the gym and sometime later we'll have another meal possibly. Uh, it's 1.30 PM right now. Usually I do one or two meals per day. Uh, today it's looking like I'm going to do two meals, uh, but we'll see what I take out later. All right, guys, it's about 10 o'clock. We're going to have meal number two and the final meal for the day. It's just going to be a repeat of meal number one, except we're going to add in a little bit of extra fat and we won't have any organ meats. So this is what grass fed beef fat usually looks like. Uh, it could be yellow. It might be a little bit uh, fresher looking. This has been sitting in my fridge for a while. I already diced up some of it and these are the pieces that we're going to throw on the grill. You know, if, if you, if you look at the texture of this, it's very soft. It's almost gelatinous. Uh, that's a telltale sign of grass fed beef. Usually the softer it is, uh, the higher the quality it is. So we have some beef fat and just in case our beef belly is not fat enough. So here I have a slab of beef belly that is not cooked. It's definitely getting a little bit funky. It was in my fridge for too long, but what I do with this is I slice it up into smaller pieces to speed up the cooking process and make it easier to eat. So we're going to have about 10 slabs of beef belly. Now, before I grill this, I'm going to have my teaspoon of colostrum for this meal. The amount you take during the day doesn't matter. What matters is how much you take at a time. That's what would elicit an immune response.
Some of you guys may have seen this in my past videos. I have a gas propane grill that I put wood in. So, I have some old grates resting on top of the burners here. I took the grease plates off so that I could have the burners directly exposed to the wood. Then I just put wood directly over one of the burners. I light the grill. Now I'm going to give it a few minutes and we'll have a nice wood fire. It's been about three minutes, fire starting to come up here. What I like doing first is I put the fat on the grill because fat is literally a fuel so it's going to accelerate the growth of the fire incredibly quickly and you can't really burn the fat because instead of burning the fat just melts. So we, we just warm up the fat a little bit on the outside and then we take it off. The fattier the meat that you're cooking with is, generally the easier it is to get a nice crust because of how much the flames come up. And yeah, we don't want the meat or the fat engulfed in flame. We just want the flame to be as close to the meat as possible without touching it. That's how you get a nice wood flavor without the that burnt creosote flavor. There's a very fine line between a black crust and a dark brown crust. So the fat is warmed up a little bit. I don't want to go too crazy. But as you can see, that brought the flame up a lot. And this beef belly is super fatty itself, so you probably don't want it too close to the flame. Here I just have some, this is just some sweet Italian sausage uh, from my sister's lunch tomorrow. I'll throw that on the grill after I'm done cooking my food. But you know, the nice thing about being on this diet and cooking every day out here is I can cook food for my family too, whether it's grilled chicken or more steak or sausage, whatever. Regardless of what I'm cooking out here, I don't usually finish cooking it on the grill. I just get the crust on the grill, then I finish it inside in the oven. It saves me time. And so I'm going to finish cooking these sausages up. I'm going to bring the meat inside and then we'll eat. Uh, if you guys are curious, this is just, this is just a jar of bison fat. Uh, I use this in case the meat is really lean. So I'll, I'll use the fat to base the meat just to flare up the flame. Something like a really lean steak or chicken. This looks awfully familiar, ladies and gentlemen. It is awfully familiar. And we're not really achieving anything more that we need to in this meal. Uh, the nutrient density for the day is already adequate. Uh, what we're doing here is predominantly calories. But since the food quality is really high, we are getting all of the fat soluble vitamins to some degree. The only difference in this meal is that I do have some fat separately. And what I like doing is eating some fat first. Uh, two reasons. One, fat is very nutrient dense. It's very satiating. Fat soluble vitamins are stored in the fat. And two, fat is cheaper. Uh, it, you know, it saves money on food essentially. So I just put a little bit of salt on the fat. And even when you have a super fatty cut like beef belly, I still usually have a little fat before. The reason I didn't do this earlier was because I was eating the brains, and brains are predominantly fat. The meat is pretty much raw in the middle. It just has the crust on the outside. And uh, really tough cuts, like belly and chuck roast, if you cut them small enough and against the grain and the cooking temperature is really light, they're still easy to chew. I mean, I don't think I'm going to do anything else that you guys haven't seen yet today. I'm probably going to finish about half of this meat. I'll have the rest tomorrow morning as my meal again. I'm going to do another teaspoon of the colostrum and the milk mixture. And you guys might be wondering, Frank, where's the liver? Uh, I haven't been able to get my hands on any decent quality liver lately, so hopefully I can get some more next week. Uh, you guys will see me eating liver again next week. If you guys do, if you guys are looking for this stuff, I mean, go to your local farms, go to local slaughterhouses, abattoirs, and ask them for the cuts. And don't expect to go there and spend like $50 a week on meat. Uh, if, if you want to do a custom order or you want someone to get something for you, it has to be worth their time and usually at least two, three, four hundred dollars worth of meat. Uh, but outside of that, we've achieved pretty much minimally inflammatory, as nutrient dense as possible. Uh, with the exception of some liver, we could have increased the vitamin A content slightly. 
but that's not necessary with you know the amount of quality animal foods we're eating today there's plenty of retinoic acid in them already thank you guys for watching please like the video subscribe hit that bell icon and share the video if you can if you guys do want to support me check out some of the youtube videos that i'm going to link at the end here and some of the other videos on my channel outside of that you guys enjoy the rest of your week